All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad Flex-15 IML. All right, so first thing we're going to do is take a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver and remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put the flat side of the screw down like that in the pattern I remove them. So here you can see we have this rectangle and then we have one in the middle. So we're just going to remove the screws and put them in that pattern on my desk. All right. If this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade or repair their devices. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, these are customer computers, so I don't own them. So if you have questions that I need to show other things on the computer, keep that in mind. I'm not going to have the computer to be able to show that. All right. Let's go ahead and continue removing all the rest of the screws. There's four at the bottom here. We're most likely going to use a suction cup to help remove this cover, but we'll see. All right. All these screws out. All right, last one here. Okay, now that we got all those screws out, let's go ahead and see about removing this bottom cover. So, it looks like the gap is on this side. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my fingernails in the gap here, and then I'm going to use my thumb to push on the back. You don't want to push on the trackpad area, but um, let's go ahead and do that. So, get my fingernails in the back there, and as you can see, I just push with my thumb, and then... Basically, we're pulling the clips out just like that. Okay, so we're going to go all the way down the sides as well. Same thing. All right. Hmm. The back here is still somewhat stuck. I don't know. Can we reach this side? All right, same thing. Fingernails in the gap. You can use uh, plastic pry tools to do this as well. Okay, um, but I just use fingernails because it's more convenient and works a lot better for me. So, same thing, fingernails in the gap, rotate and push, and there we go, just like that. Okay, so there we go, now we got the entire cover out, we can go ahead and lift this up. You can see inside, it's a bit dusty. Okay, we got the main battery here, you got the bio CMOS battery here. I'm going to disconnect the main battery and the CMOS or BIOS battery, just to see if there's a temporary short. Sometimes that will reset it. So to disconnect the battery, we're going to get as close to the connector as possible. Man, I'm trying to get all these cables up. Okay, let me just do it this way then. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push on the lip of this connector, and we're going to try and walk this connector out if we can get in there. So, nope, that won't work. All right, so cables it is. You can possibly also use a small flathead screwdriver or plastic tool. Okay, so I'm going to use that here, and we're just going to use that to help pull that out, just like this. Oops, hopefully you were able to see that. There we go. All right, Let's set that aside. We're going to also disconnect the BIOS or CMOS battery here. Just going to grab the wings with my fingernails, and then kind of just wiggle as I kind of pull, and just keep wiggling it, and eventually the connector will come out. So keep wiggling, wiggling, wiggling as you pull. Okay, come on. It's slowly coming out. There we go. All right. Then we're also going to open up the computer after we did that. Oh, the gap is hard to get underneath with the cover off. So there we go. We're going to open up the computer and then I'm going to press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds just to just to drain any residual power. Um, I think the power button's on the side of the cover for this model, so that's over here. Can I reach this while it's disassembled, or do I need to put... Oh, there's a loose screw in there. That's probably what killed their computer. Okay, so let's see here. Am I doing this the right way? <laughs> Oh, okay, the power button's on the other side. Sorry about that. So we're going to rotate this over. 
All right. And then we're gonna press and hold the power button. So there's multiple buttons here. Let me make sure I get the right one. Okay, so this one, oops, can't even see what I'm looking at. So this one next to the SD card slot is the power button. The other one below it is the one key recovery button that you can press with a needle. So I'm gonna press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds just to drain any residual power. All right. Okay, that's pretty good. Flip this back over. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna short out the BIOS or CMOS battery here. I'm just using a screwdriver to do this. All right. Okay, then I'm gonna clean the dust out here. But um, this is mainly going to be a quick look inside. I'm not gonna completely disassemble this thing, but I'll show you a few things. So underneath this cover here, I just take my fingernail and get underneath one of these corners. Okay, and then we can pop that up just like that. You can see there's only one stick of RAM. Pull these two tabs to the side, the RAM pops up. Okay, then you can go ahead and pull it out. So the RAM is, here you go, it's a 16 gig stick, PC42666V. You'll wanna check how much RAM your computer has. I don't know, if this only has 16 gigs of RAM, then it's only using this one stick. Some models, they'll have RAM soldered to the motherboard, and other models will actually um, have the uh, just single RAM stick like that. Sometimes there'll be a stick of RAM that's hidden underneath the motherboard, but uh, in this case, the motherboard seems so close to the base that I doubt it will fit in there. All right, you got an SSD here. I'm not gonna take it out because they have the warranty sticker, but most likely it uses a PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver. If it doesn't, it might be a PH0 or JAS0. But anyways, this is a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. So if you wanted to replace the SSD, one screw, remove it, pull it up slightly like the stick of RAM, and then you can pull it back. All right, we're going to take the hard drive out of here because that one screw was loose and fell out. So we're going to take this metal plate out using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Okay, let's go ahead and get all of these out. Okay, now that we've gotten all those screws out, we're gonna slide this back. I like to use these little raised parts here, slide that back, and then we can pull it up. So, oh, there's no hard drive in here, it's just a metal bracket. If you want, you can add a two and a half inch SATA hard drive, the connector is right there. When you put it in this bracket and then slide it into place, it will um, attach that into place. So it looks like this one loose screw that came out from this bracket was rolling around inside the computer and that's very likely what destroyed it. Hopefully it's just a temporary short and didn't fry anything, but uh, you never know when stuff like that happens. It could be a permanent um, damage. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna slide this back in after getting that screw in. Um, probably need to add some thread locker there, so I'm gonna get the um, blue thread locker, and we're gonna put that just to make sure that those screws don't come out because they were coming loose, so. Just to be safe, I am going to add some blue thread locker to all four screws. Okay, sorry, this is making this uh, process longer than expected, but basically take the screw, add the blue stuff on it, add to do it off camera because I don't want to put it over the computer. And we're just going to do that with all four screws, okay? So you get the idea that screw. Let me actually move this a little bit. There we go. Put that on there. And then tighten that screw into place. Oop. Okay, and hopefully that will prevent these screws from coming back out. Last one. Okay. 
All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and put the metal bracket back in. Okay, you have to start it slightly down like this, <clears throat> slightly down this way. All right, and then you slide it forward. At least I think, I don't know if you can, okay, maybe if the hard drive's in there, you might have to slide it at an angle like this to get it in and then drop it into place. Whatever works, you'll be able to figure it out, I think, I hope. <laughs> Anyways, let's get these four screws back in. Okay. Alright, and then let's go over the other components we got in here. So, we got the DC jack or the charge port. Let me show you here. In the upper right hand corner. Up here, okay. So this is replaceable, it's not soldered in. Um, <clears throat> if you need to replace it, there's two screws. You will have to open the hinge up slightly to get this out. And then you just got this one simple plug, you just kind of wiggle and pull it back. Wireless card here with the two antennas. If you want to see how to remove those, I show that in a lot of my videos, so you can watch that. Got the speaker connector here, it connects both speakers. The wires just go down and then go to each speaker. Speakers aren't held in place with screws, they're just with these rubber things, so you can actually just lift these out. All right, I'm gonna leave that in. Um, okay, I'm not gonna be taking out the keyboard, so I'm not 100% sure what these small cables are, but the way they're moving, it looks like this is the trackpad connector or touchpad. Oh yeah, it says JTP1. So that's um, touchpad most likely. Um, keyboard connector right here. You got the keyboard backlight connector. You got the fingerprint sensor, I believe. And then you got this connector up here, which plugs into the IO board here for the two USB ports, the SD card slot and the power button, as well as the one key recovery button. Okay, and then you got the LCD LVDS connector. If you're gonna mess with this, make sure that you did disconnect the battery and press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to um, drain any residual power. Otherwise, when you pull this cable up, there's a good chance that you can actually short something out on the computer, right? There's some junk there. All right, so anyways, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna clean it up outside. So basically I take a toothbrush, scrub off the dust to loosen it up, and then I use an air blower to clean it. Um, so I'm gonna do that and I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back, we just cleaned it up. Okay, that's all cleaned up. Cleaned up the fan area as well. All right, so let's go ahead now and reconnect the batteries, the um, Bio CMOS battery and the regular battery. So let's zoom in a bit here to show you a little bit better. Okay, get that connector in. Pinch the two pieces together. There we go. All right, and the main battery, same thing, line it up. Get that in place. Pinch the two pieces together. There we go. All right, now we're going to plug this in and see if the charge light comes on before the charge light wasn't coming on since it was shorted. So let me get the plug ready and I'll be back. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this is gonna light up the charge port. So we're gonna plug this in. And still no light, so Looks like no luck. The screw must have screwed up the thing. So if it needs to be repaired, I'm probably gonna have to have my partner work on it, which he does the motherboard repairs. Actually, I see the keyboard lights on. That's interesting. But uh, hmm. I don't know if you can see it in camera, probably not. The keyboard light is on, but nothing else. Uh, maybe if I turn off the light. Still can't see it. Maybe if I turn off the flash. Huh. You can't. Oh, there you go. You can see the keyboard backlight. So for some reason, the keyboard backlight's on, but nothing's on the screen at all. And the power charge port light isn't on. So I'm going to press and hold the power button and see if that causes the keyboard lights to turn off. Okay, again, I don't know if you can see the lights. Oh yeah, you can. Okay, I'm gonna hold the power button and see if that shuts it off. Sorry, I know it's blurry for some reason. 
Okay, it doesn't look like the power button is shutting off the lights. Let's see, let's hold it for about 15 seconds. Nothing's happening at all. Yeah, I don't think, I think something is shorted and it's just lighting up the keyboard for some reason, but nothing else. Okay, the one key recovery for some reason turned it off and turned it back or made the fan spin. That was kind of weird. All right, let's try the power button again. Nothing. Hmm. So for some reason, the one key recovery button turned the keyboard backlight off and then made the fan spin, but now it's doing nothing. I'm going to try pressing it again. Yeah, nothing happens. All right, I'm gonna unplug this. Let's try unplugging and plugging in one more time. Still nothing. I'll try the power button. Nothing, okay. Yeah, this thing's dead. I'm gonna have to have my partner take a look and see um, if the customer wants to have that done. But uh, looks like it's completely dead. So anyways, let's turn the lights back on and let's put this thing back together. So that's sad. All right, this says 512 gig SSD as well. All right, so anyways, we're gonna put this back together. So just line everything up. Okay, and then we're just gonna click everything back in. Okay, you're going to want to check around the edges to make sure everything is clicked into place. Here you can see it's not locked in there, so we're going to click that, and this one too. There we go. Alright, and then we're just going to put back all the T5 or Torx 5 screws. Um, looks like, hopefully this video will help you guys with upgrading your computer, or if your hard drive or something is dead, but as far as the issue that it has, the motherboard issue, being shorted um, looks like that I'm gonna have to send to a professional all right anyways I'm gonna put all these screws that's pretty much all there is to this again hopefully this video helped if it did make sure to like subscribe and share my channel with others if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel all right thanks for watching you're welcome to stay as I put back the rest of the screws but that's pretty much it all right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this spike.